Hey everyone, Nick Engvall here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you about some of the people that make the sneaker history community and this podcast possible. It's more important than ever to think about who you give your money to when you're buying clothing to go with your kicks. Our friends at Guilty Goods started their brand with a goal of giving back, especially to the communities that make sneaker culture possible. With every purchase from Guilty Goods, at least 10% of the proceeds are donated to organizations like Big Brothers and Big Sisters, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, the Movement for Black Lives, and many more. You can save 30% on your order by using the code HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us. Again, that's HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us for 30% off, and you can feel good about your purchase knowing you're supporting a meaningful cause. Sneakers are all about presentation, and if you're like me, displaying your kicks at home or in the office is just as important as when they're on your feet. Sneaker Throne makes sneaker display cases featuring customizable LED lights, drop side cases to showcase the entire side of the shoe, not just the heel or the toe, the whole shoe. They've also got display cases for trading card collectors and hat collectors. To me, it's the perfect way to display your collection. You can save at least 10% on your Sneaker Throne order by using the code HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. That's HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. If you're a Patreon supporter or a member of our Discord community, you already know about Kicks with V Hot Sauce and his small batch locally sourced hot sauce. V has been one of the biggest supporters of sneaker history and the podcast since the early days. and He's currently the defending champion in our Community Trivia Nights competition. Kicks with V Hot Sauce has been a huge hit with the community. You can save 10% on your order by using the code SNEAKERHISTORY10 at kickswithvhots.com. That's SNEAKERHISTORY10 at kickswithvhots.com. Now, you're probably here because you like sneakers, and if you join the Discord, you know our community is about so much more than that. Whether it's the marathon-like community calls, trivia night debates, the in-person meetups, or just sharing our favorite experiences, we found that although we have such different backgrounds, we all have some unexpected shared passions. Not only does the entire community look out for each other when it comes to releases, we're like a support group for life in general. You can join the Discord community for free by heading to the show notes of this episode. After you're done listening to this episode, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Now let's get into today's episode. Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move! Against Gill, the crowd on its feet. Allen for the win! Welcome to the Sneaker History Podcast. What up, what up? Welcome to the Sneaker History Podcast. My name is Nick Ingball with my guys Mike, Roe, and Robbie. And it's super echoey because I've been moving, as the guys told you last week. But uh, what's good, fellas? I miss your faces. I miss talking to you. It feels like it's been, I mean, it seriously feels like it's been years. Right? Uh, it's all good, man. I wish it was warmer here. I don't like living like you guys on this northwest coast. This is gross. But other than that, happy to be here. Happy to see Nick's smiling face again. I don't, I don't know about you, Robbie, but it is not this cold usually. Like, this is absurd. I feel like I never left Missouri. So we're going to denigrate the Pacific Northwest. We're going to denigrate parts of the South, parts of the Midwest, depending on what side of Missouri you want to feel like you're a part of. But... We're just living. For, Everybody has a safe, uneventful holiday, and I'm sure I'll end the episode that way. So there's a nice bookend to my little opening monologue. <laughs> there you go. Happy to see everybody, too. Nick, it's been a while. It's been a while since we've had all four of us in any iteration. Um, the New Yorkers, I think, make the language go round in the U.S. The only way to describe outside is brick. It's just it's brick outside right now. So <laughs> they win. They stay winning with the modern lingo. Um yeah, like I, I'm usually in, I'm usually the warmest or close to it, but like warmest right now is like low to mid 40s. So that's kind of that's awful. <laughs> awful. My watch says 21 right now. That's, that's absurd. I, I live in South Texas. What is this? <sighs> South Texas is like 21. Can you do something for me? Yeah. Like, I got you. <laughs> Can you do yeah. something for me? Nothing. Did nothing for me, but make me cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. These fire takes that we have on this episode are going to warm up all within a 500 mile listening radius. So Nick, let's Ooh. get to it. What are we doing today? Exactly. We're talking about the best of the year. You know, we're wrapping up. We got to talk about our favorite brands, our favorite retros, our favorite performance shoe. Robbie got a whole list for us to, to get through. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to talk about. So how do we want to start? Let's do... Rocking and copying uh, holiday version, as we described Ooh. amongst ourselves. So listeners, um, normally it's a what we wore and what we want to buy. 
this holiday end of year episode is going to be something our rocking is something we uh, bought this year and copping is something that we missed out in 2022. So a shoe you didn't get in 2022 that you wished you could cop. So, I mean, I'll start here. Um, why not? So the cloud away um, South Two West eight collab. Um, it's an outdoor brand. Uh, this is what I've actually worn my little walk to the ATM today. Um, but a really cool, I'm going to say more about the shoe when we talk about brands, but uh super cool shoe, very comfortable. Sliding on is all the rage now. Um, these laces do nothing. So wintertime socks, <laughs> you slide these bad boys on and you're all set. You're, you're, uh, you're really happy. Um, copping. There's two shoes. One, they're both kind of gripes. Why I don't have them? I'm gonna say the reverse Mocha Travis Scott one that came out this year. That's just how many shoes mm-hmm. I had to Google um, if it came out this year or not. But I was like, man, I really wish I had that. I saw a pair this past weekend, so I wish I would have caught the m- reverse Mocha Travis Scott Air Jordan One Low Premium. Nice. How about how about somebody else, Mike? What's something that you did rock? And oh. you wish you could have copped. Well, something I did rock is something. It's, it's perfect. We're talking about Christmas, and me and my wife are awful about giving each other gifts super early because we just let the kids do the whole Christmas thing. Uh, so I got the Saucony Shadow 6000 Space Fight. So if you guys are familiar with that, their whole fight colorways, they started last year with the food fight. They take all of their past colorways from that particular uh, genre or that that subject matter and put them all together to kind of a what the style shoe. And uh, yeah, definitely super happy to have this one. And something I missed out on, really no excuse for it. I just didn't get around to it yet, but it is going to be the Jordan 3 Fire Red. Uh, I need to circle back and get that one before people lose their mind about the threes coming out next year because the price is still pretty darn close to uh, to retail if I haven't. Uh, oh, look at that. You got a couple <laughs> pairs of those, just send me one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, definitely one that's been on kind of like my hit list that I need to I need to have in the collection. Perfect. Go ahead, Roy. I'll go ahead and go next. Sorry, Mike. I had the fire reds uh, ready and aimed and fired. So clean. Sorry. Bad pun again. (laughs) Apparently, I'm the resident Canadian in the show because of the two apologies. Uh, What I have rocked the most this year, as Rob did mention, slip on is all the rage. And in the infamous words of a famous Russian, I must break you because the fly ease, my goodness. And as a toddler wrangler upper in the morning, this shoe has saved me so many minutes of so many days that I may have done something productive in that time loss because it's a just flop, flop, on, on, snap it back into place. And then I'm after my one year old. So shout out to Sonia. Shout out to the Flyees. And even though this shoe came out last year, I'm considering it a release this year because this was the general release. And that's how this shoe should have always been. It should never have been any sort of hype beast fodder. And I don't feel too controversial when I say this, but let's do better for future iterations of this type of shoe, Nike. As for one that I rocked or one that I copped that I missed out on, uh, LeBron 20, the black colorway whose name is escaping me at the time, but I would say that is my shoe that I missed out on. And now it's one of those things that I have two colorways of LeBron 20 and I would happily trade the purple and gold for the black colorway. So if somebody can indulge me and fill in the blank, that would be much appreciated. But that's what I have. Nick, how about you? What were you rocking? What were you copying? Uh, Rocking. This is probably one of those retro conversations later too, but Uh-oh. T-Max. Nice. What do they call them? The, the, the retro mods? Oh, resto mods. Resto mods. Yeah. yeah. Um, Super clean. I just love yeah, I mean, I, I definitely am after all those old T-Max. I have a handful of the older ones, but like to see them all again and be able to throw it on and have it actually feel somewhat comfortable underneath as opposed to just like, you know, ground i love you adidas but man like that cushioning <laughs> you know there was there was a time when it just was not right so um then uh yeah the copping that i wish i would have done which i absolutely will get at some point i didn't get any huff dunks i would love to get all three colorways at some point if i can obviously one of my favorite brands favorite people um so just just didn't pull the trigger i uh, nobody hit like you know in, in my size out of the discord so it was like just l's everywhere i entered like 30 something raffles for that holy shoe crap and didn't hit 
like I entered anything that was that, that they would ship mm-hmm. in our feed of raffles in the discord. I entered in my size. I had cam enter in my size. Like, I mean, just everything I could possibly do and didn't hit. So Dang. I don't know, maybe it just wasn't meant to be, or the universe was like, chill, save your money for a few months and buy it later or what. But that's definitely the the missed, missed opportunity <laughs> of the year for me. So, man, that hurts. Row it. Those black ones are called the Trinity colorway. Mm. That seems to be a popular theme. I think for a lot of people um, in 2022, what Nick just described, I didn't try that hard for the reverse mocha Travis Scott's, but like there's at least one of those shoes a quarter where you could put in 50 entries at various places to try to get a shoe. And you just, you, you just, it doesn't quite work out that way. Um, so I meant to put this on the list. Nick kind of just started it off, but I don't like talking about L's, but like, what's the most frustrating? <laughs> I think L, Nick, I think I can speak for you that the Huff is probably yours. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm going to go with the Mocha one. Do either one of you have an off the top or you're just like, God damn it. I wish I that would have worked out. I think for me, this is probably going to be the generic answer for a lot of our listeners. The lost and found ones, but it was also one of those self-fulfilling mm-hmm. prophecies where it's just like, I don't know if I want to go through the hassle of standing in line going through back channel means to try to obtain it and it was one of those things i still haven't seen the shoe in person yet so in my mind it's a decision that i'm kind of depending on which way the wind blows on a particular day i'm happy i didn't get it and then other days i'm like nah i should have got those just for the posterity and the history lesson sake since this is sneaker history but i would say the sneaker history one for me mike um i was sitting there thinking i was like man which shoe was it I try to like let the L's just kind of like fall to the wayside. I kind of forget about them. Um, but the one that sticks in my mind is the Mamba Sita Kobe 6 because I actually yes. got early access. I clicked on it and it basically gave me the middle finger uh, emoji. It's like uh, jokes on you, you're really not getting it. So um, <sighs> that was my biggest like like upset moment of the year that I that I remember. So <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You, you know Mamba what's Sita. funny about the Lost and Wounds too? Lost and Founds is – I saw people that got them delivered and then got, got one of the pairs that had the mold on it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's probably the biggest L of the year because (laughs) you actually hit on the shoe that nobody could hit on Mm -hmm. and then you get it. And it's not like you can return it and get one that's in better condition, right? Like you could return it and get your money back, but you're not getting a replacement shoe from (laughs) Nike on that shoe or from Jordan ran on that shoe. So. I've yeah, gotten in an argument back in like 2010 with a faulty pair of Jordans. I called Nike support and like, we can refund you. We don't have another pair laying around. And it's like, ah, duh, you don't. So none of us are yeah. really that negative mindset person. What's like your, your favorite um, win of the year. And I guess I could start off because they're wrapped right now underneath the Christmas tree. <laughs> Cause I'm a sociopath. Um, but I forgot I entered the Home Alone 2 Forum Low 84s. Ooh, the and I, nice. Yeah, and I got an email in the middle of the day. And I'm like, oh, you won these. And I love Home Alone 2. Um, I love Forum Lows. The 84 style is really great. So, like, it was a very surprising win. I was like, oh, crud, I forgot I even entered these. And they're only like 110, 120 bucks. So um, I'll happily open those on Sunday, Christmas morning for myself. <laughs> but that was a surprising win where I was like, oh, okay. I'll take this W. Two things, Robbie. Please, <laughs> when you open them, you have to make the face. The Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. Oh, that was perfect of timing. Course. Can we like loop that? That was great, Michael. Please. That, that needs to be like what we use for promoting this episode right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and not only that tangent, it's just because uh, wasn't the inspiration for that true the pigeon lady? Shout out to the pigeon yeah. lady because she's played a pivotal role in a lot of mid 90s kids movies because she was yes. Kevin's guardian angel in Home Alone 2. And then she was a guardian angel of Roger and JP from Angels in the Outfield. So whenever I see that woman, oh, I'm inclined God. to do this. And just say thank you, madam, because you went three yeah. for three of raising three upstanding members of society, whether it be for a brief you know two week period or a whole year. You can do a p- pigeon motif without it having an affiliation with Jeff Staple, too. Yeah. So something that's grays um, doesn't always have to be Jeff. It can be pigeon lady. So that's what that's my favorite W of 2022. How about somebody else? Is, is here another W? 
I probably uh, got I probably got like a tie on mine because I was able to get the the Giants colorway, the Griffey one. Like I I think it was Will that sent me the link. I apologize if it was somebody else. I can't remember. That was months ago and my mind is like spaghetti right now. <laughs> but like to get the link early and to be able to like just I, I think it was hit it and it was like, cool, this is up. It wasn't supposed to release for a couple of weeks. I just checked out and no problems. That was definitely one of them. And then hit on one of the, the giants SB dunks too. So it was like, you know, around, nice. you know, around here, like that's a, that shoe obviously went super fast. Nobody was, you know, it was super difficult to get, but um, those are like kind of the two that I think of when I think of like, you know, the, the like, surprise win for me so nice mine is kind of i feel like i'm kind of cheating with this one but for me it's a huge win just based on you know what we do and just kind of it almost feel like kind of like getting a nod and kind of like a pat on the back like hey you're doing a good job we we see you we appreciate you what you do and that is going to be uh that friends and family uh question that was like the one of 100 and i mean it's just I'm never gonna wear it. It's gonna sit on the shelf like you see back behind me. The other one, but this one just probably one of the more uh, the biggest W I've ever received, and, and probably just more of a meaningful shoe, just kind of all together. So that's that's my biggest W. Was that the panini? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull a Zach Morris timeout right here <laughs> because shout out to Reebok for sending me that shoe. Hey, there I'm you go. The, I'm in the process of moving, right? So I I have the original Nuggets, but like two or three of those colorways. And I have like the 10 year anniversary black and, and baby blue. Mm-hmm. So if you listen to this podcast and you go, and I haven't uploaded the video for all those shoes to talk about that, you need to like h- hound me on social media and be like, yo, where's the video <laughs> every day until I upload that video. And- it might not happen for a couple of weeks. Cause frankly, I just need to get moved first, <laughs> but like, my goal is to like, I actually have, you know, that shoe is super dope too, because it's, it's tied to Panini. Mm-hmm. I was collecting all those shoes. So I have a massive, you know, amount of those Panini, like Allen Iverson cards too. So I got a good video in the works that I've been thinking about and planning. And like, you know, so I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I want, I want people to be like, yo, Nick, what's up with the video? It's in pre-production right now, guys. We're in <laughs> initial, we're in yeah, that, exactly, initial photography. Exactly. What's it called? <laughs> Principal photography. Yeah. <laughs> No, all I heard was pounding video, social media. So Nick is essentially opening up an OnlyFans account. So good job. <laughs> gotta, gotta pay for, gotta pay for those car yeah. parts, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> I'll use that to say my favorite W was a really recent W, and that was the eBay dunk. Uh, and the reason why I like nice. that is the fact that Tactics Local Shop in Portland does a great job with all their raffles where you have to enter in a quiz to be eligible for said raffle. And it's a nice mixture of factual questions as well as opinionated questions. And I think for the Bodecker Foundation and what it serves for, which is providing kids from communities that don't necessarily get the same access to certain creative mediums, it was a great spotlight on what exactly they do, pay a little bit of homage to the man, the myth, the legend, Sandy Bodecker. And then also just giving you that ability to suggest where they should go next. So for me, probably the most important question of that quiz was where do you want to see them go next? So I made the suggestion of they should allow kids to do some sort of video game design because I think a lot of the creativity and the creative arts that they focus on and rightfully so is around sneaker design and storytelling. But I also think video games are that modern day story that in 50 to 60 years down the line, when we talk about the great American novel, we're also going to start be talking about the great American video game. Nice. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, that's great. Could not have said it better myself. So let's go ahead and have this like a good old wave, right? Go up and down ebbs and flows. Um, This doesn't have to be a shoe, um, but like what's something in 2022 that kind of sucked in in, in the shoe world? And, and, And my example is um, overpriced retros. So the LeBron 2 costing $210 for a LeBron 2 retro is a little insane. And it's a little, it borders on like the disrespectful part (laughs) in my eyes. I've wanted that shoe since it came out in 2005, but I'm not, I never paid resale on it because people were tripping for like 300 something for an old LeBron years ago. Mm -hmm. Now Nike thinks they can get away with 210. Like 
that shoe is not worth that much. There's, I can get two pairs. I very rarely think like Mike in that sense where I can get two pairs, but I can get like, see, two, I, up, I, no, Mike, <laughs> you'll try to get four pairs for $210. I'm I'll thinking try to get I can six get six pairs for $210. Yeah, I think I can get, I can get the lobster. I can get a, if I hit retail, like a lobster SB and an air force one, I get like two viable, good. Not that your picks aren't good, but you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't have to find shoes on sale to, to get to 210. I can like get to 210 with two pairs of shoes at retail. So the fact yeah. that one 15 year old LeBron cost $210 sucked in 2022. I mean, and I don't think it's going to get better. To piggyback that yeah, up, the uh, thing that annoyed well. me about that is that it was more than the new LeBron. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's the triggering <laughs> that thing. That was my me. point, Nick, because I was just going to say you're also charging $200 in this economy for the LeBron 20. And I get it's a premium product and it is that sports car because so often LeBron's footwear has been best described as the Batman's tumbler from the Christopher Nolan movies. But <laughs> 200 is – and not only that, this is definitely first world black badge problems. Give us the employee discount on the website, Nike. Come on. I'm not trying to pay retail for those as well. I mean, shout outs to Name Redacted, who was able to apply that birthday code. So that way I could pay some under retail for a pair of LeBron 20s because that's definitely the niche and not the norm. So shout outs to yeah, you. Insane. Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, dude, I, I got to really agree with you on that one. And then something that kind of got me like i said it's not directly associated with a sneaker but more the sneaker media and just kind of the things that we consume i feel like a lot of the like the youtube channels and more the new people coming on that got this like crazy boom it's not everybody because there's some people out there who are who actually have some good videos like i really like the guys from uh like private selection those are i like their videos but i, I feel like only only media that's taken off is watching people buy and sell shoes there's no uh a lot of the algorithm was pushed that way of like oh i'm doing a buyout of x amount of shoes or i'm going to sell x amount of shoes as opposed to the traditional storytelling around you know xyz shoe i feel like it just got pushed that way and it really kind of skewed people's i guess perception of sneakers per se it's just like oh it's only like a source of a commodity to go trade back and forth. There's no, there was like, there was no, I guess, emotion behind it. And for us and for myself, the way we we talk about sneakers and go about our process, it feel it, it kind of sucked. Feel like we're kind of being having to like readjust and you know do more to be seen as opposed to just a simple transaction video. Which if I want that, I just go stand in the store and watch people buy things. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a good point. I mean it's it's really interesting the way it's all evolving and i guess like i'll share my kind of frustration of the year and also turn it into like a positive the po most positive thing in the year too right mm -hmm. my my biggest like gripe with the way things went this year is how everybody had to be talking about kanye and all of the negativity. And I get that we've set that standard in and everybody's trying to get those. Okay. Time out. Did you know that we have an entire network of podcasts? That's right. It's called the retrospect podcast network. And it includes a number of shows that you might like if you're enjoying this one. First up is for the F1 fans. Exhaust notes is a formula one podcast. That's the perfect balance for the new fans joining the sport and the tried and true diehard F1 fans who've been there all along. New episodes of Exhaust Notes drop every Tuesday on all of your favorite podcast platforms and at exhaustnotes.fm. We've also got a show for the fitted hat collectors out there called Crown and Stitch. As a baseball fan, I've been obsessed with hats for as long as I can remember, and the number of people collecting now has gone through the roof. It reminds me of sneakers back in the day, and I absolutely love seeing creativity of the new releases. Every Wednesday, we drop a new episode of Crown and Stitch on all of your favorite podcast platforms and on YouTube at youtube.com slash crownandstitch. If you follow me personally on social platforms at Nick Engvall, you probably already know I first dipped my toes in the podcast game back in 2015 with a show called Outside the Box. Originally hosted by my friends Brandon Edler and Jacques Slade, it eventually evolved into a show with Tiffany Beers, Jacques Slade, and myself, and then into an interview series with some amazingly creative guests. While the show has gone through a lot of changes throughout the years and it's currently on hiatus, 
A lot of people have been enjoying past episodes recently, and I'm excited to say I have new episodes in the works for the new year. We'll be adding new podcasts to the Retrospect Network in the coming months as well. In fact, if you'd like to advertise on any of the shows, be a guest on any of the shows, or even talk to us about getting your own podcast started, reach out to us at podcast at sneakerhistory.com and find out more about the podcast network at retrospectpodcast.com. Clicks and it's, you know, it's important to, to, you know, talk about news, but I feel like one thing that we typically don't do is talk about the bullshit and we avoided it quite a bit. Um, mainly because I just don't want to support that. And and I know you guys don't want to. And it's like, look, this is not how we are. We don't rock with that shit. So let's move it aside. And so my gripe is that so many people had to fall into the, you know, just like repeated up and downs of that this year, you know, it was months of this chaos. Yeah. And like, it's, it literally, every time it popped up, I just kept thinking of that scene in in, in, you know, the Batman where he's like, where, Alfred is like, some people just choose chaos to choose chaos. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's what it felt like all the time. On the flip side of that, there were a lot of people that really stood their ground and stood up for what they believe in because of what was coming out and because of what was being said. You know, like I have to give props to Jacques Slade. Obviously, he's a close friend of mine and he he has to toe that line of like, I'm a news person, but I also want to have my own values in this. And he count, straight up came out and said, you know, we're done talking about mm -hmm. this man. We're done talking about anything that's not shoe related from him. And it's really tough to do that, right? Because you're going to lose a lot of views. And when you, when your income and your livelihood comes from that, that revenue, it's a tough thing to do. And on the flip side of that, like, you know, the whole industry had, had to be sh is shaken up by that. You know, like people lost jobs, people lost tons of money because of it. Yeah. And that sucks that one person's ignorance, in my opinion, free to have whatever opinion you want, but I think it's ignorance caused that much pain and suffering for people that, that really love this footwear industry. And it's, it's, you know, it's two sided, you know, it's, it's very frustrating, but at the same time, I love people standing up for what they believe in. I don't think you have to put people down to believe in something, but I definitely think that when it comes to your integrity, you should be saying this negativity is not worth whatever clicks I'm going to get from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've, I think done a really good job about that. Like Robbie said, when we started, you know, we don't even, we don't even talk about L's in that way. Right. Like we try to keep it short and snappy and be like, cool shit happened. We're moving <laughs> on to the next thing. Let's have some fun and talk about sneakers because we love this stuff. And I think that doesn't happen enough across the board in sneakers, whether that's, you know, YouTube and podcasts or, or media or whatever. But this year there were a lot of people that, that definitely hit their limit of the bullshit and turned it around into like, let me, let me stand up for what I believe in, regardless of what that means for my views or my downloads or my revenue or my ad advertisers. And I got to give props to all those people. Cause you know, it's a really tough thing to do when, you know, people will make less money by choosing that. And it might be more money in the long run, but you know, Hey, we all, we all got to figure out how to eat. And when you've got to like ration to get by, that's kind of a tough thing to, to choose to do regardless of how, you know, true to yourself it is. It's, it's always tough to, to say, Hey, I'm going to take a little bit off my plate and figure out how to get through this. So props to all the people that actually stepped up and did that this year. Sure. No, it's an industry that's often designated by the amount of clout it's seemingly we're all chasing and to watch the sneaker industry grow up and develop a backbone and mature kind of signifies to me that it's a new era. And I mean, that in the most respectful way, people aren't going to put up with it anymore. And it's one of those things that it's almost a throwback to see the inclusivity side of things being championed and amplified again. Exactly. So, I mean, yep. let's, let's transition from, um, I would say the worst collabs of the year, all the Kanye shoes <laughs> by default, right? <laughs> um, so like our favorite collab of 2022. And I wanted to get this one off fresh off of what Nick just said, because my pick for collab of 2022 gets a lot of hate in the discord. A lot of people do not like this shoe and I'm going to, I'm going to fight. I'm going to die uh -oh. fighting for this shoe. We the best, baby. The DJ Khaled Air Jordan 5 <laughs> is my collab of the year for nice. all of the reasons Nick just said. My shoes say keep going. This one says keep, but that one says going. <laughs> and there's no anti-Semitism with DJ Khaled. 
that's that's an outright joke but like <laughs> this shoe he might annoy you listener i get it you might not like his music i get that two preferences of yours but you cannot tell me dj khaled brings negativity mm-hmm. and you know that high level a high octane level of energy can rub people the wrong way but god damn it this shoe is coral and miami like and it's quilted it's the quicker picker upper there it is um, <laughs> but it says we the best on the bottom like i'm sorry the materials are insane when you hold this shoe they're insanely good but my shoes tell me to keep going and i don't think your shoes tells you to keep going so <laughs> these shoes rock i mean they're a little pricey also like but when I was the opportunity to buy these at retail, I was like, I will take these at retail. Yes, please send them to me. I think you can um, still find them floating around too for retail if you if you look around hard enough. If you can, this this pink coral material is insane. They look like samples that actually came out. We've been seeing DJ Khaled shoes for years and years and years. People just can't have nice things. I'd rather bitch about it than then then enjoy it and everybody <laughs> i've told this to don't, doesn't like my pick it's not just the discord anybody i've told them to this is my collab with the they're like you're stupid um but i will die happy and positive and stupid than than the negative and smart well, god damn look at that color though they're insane it's the they're same insane. color as your face shoot. right now and that's what i <laughs> Lots of people dislike that, and it's okay. I think it's their dislike of DJ Khaled. I don't like DJ Khaled's music either, but oh, I hey, I got no shame. I like it, right? I mean, you know, it, it is what it Justin is. Justin Bieber on there, maybe yeah. some Migos. I can't do no, a exactly. whole album, but there's singles I can listen to. Like, no, exactly. I'm gonna bob my head yeah. to it. I, he's not, he's not a insane clown posse <laughs> in my book, <laughs> but like, he's not my favorite. No, but if you can't. If you're not so hood and wear your pants around your waist and you never dance when you're in this place, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> the whole song just played up ahead when you said that too. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Ace hood. Dude, Look it up. I would just say that it's in a genre that is seemingly characterized by conspiracy theorists. DJ Khaled's conspiracy theory on why the Heat lost game one of the 2014 finals because the Spurs cut out the AC in their arena is still my favorite. So I will support that man. <laughs> and I know Mike being the resident Spurs fan, that probably pains him to hear. But at the same time... Nope. I'm supporting Khaled 100, but I didn't know about that theory. Now I'm going to buy the shoe to support Khaled. You know what? Let's, let's, one of my Christmas gifts to you will be the YouTube link to when DJ Khaled appeared on First Take and espoused that theory specifically to Skip Bayless and yeah, Stephen A. Smith. I get to see that. That's so awesome. So, so Rowan, if that's your favorite DJ Khaled take, what's your favorite collab of 2022? I think for me, and now thinking about it, this could be something we could apply to a previous question. The shoe that I missed out on that I'm now kicking myself is the Simpsons dunk, and it's more a personal thing than anything. Uh, the Simpsons, along with professional wrestling, are the reason why I speak very good, very well, very bad English, depending on who you want to ask and how you want to ask them that. And it's just one of those things that sometimes even the medium profile sneakers mean more to somebody because of the personal history. So I'll say that. And really, I know that the Simpsons are kind of in their waning years and anything that's been going at a relatively high level for 33 years or 35 years, I forgot what the actual number is, deserves some sort of kudos. So I would say that's my collab of the year. But similarly, I think the Simpsons like DJ Khaled just put a spring in my step. I can never be mad if I'm watching a Simpsons episode or watching DJ Khaled discover the wonders of jet skiing. So there you go. Blast. <laughs> Mike, what's your favorite collab of 2022? So I have to give an honor, uh, honorable mention because I just watched this documentary on uh, on Hulu. The honorable mention is going to be the uh, East Side Golf uh, and Jordan collaboration. Just after watching that whole story of these guys, got to have respect for it. And I've been trying to like ease my way into golf uh, and not be frustrated. But uh, super cool collaboration with that, those guys. But the collaboration I picked for the year is actually going to be again kind of kind of cheating. But it's the whole Teddy Santis made in the USA collaboration uh could have 16 shoes uh okay, and counting i think yeah see it's a, it's a lot of shoes but the fact that each and every one of them had is just absurd quality to them although they were pretty pricey as well i think all were at least 200 bucks but they were except for like maybe one two or three colorways each and every one of them was accessible and even to this day there's still some floating around for for retail on just normal retail sites so what he's done, he's just 
I like how you flooded the market with quality and said, pretty much pick what you want. You're not going to have to go through all this, you know, fuss, fuss and fight to get it. So I really like what he's doing and he's going to be pushing it forward into this year with another, another collection. In true Mike fashion, you, you, you find a way to take one shoe and turn it into 17. <laughs> Look, so. man, I'm all, I'm all about my, uh, my value. What, what can I get for a dollar? You know, <laughs> 17. That works though. This, I'm just messing with you. So, I mean, those are all <laughs> mostly retro models. I think the new balances. So yeah, yeah. There's no, what's new... your favorite, what's your favorite, um, retro of the year then Mike? Oh, you already know. It comes out at least, you know, a couple times a, a, a month. It's this. It's my favorite retro of the month. The Big Bang LeBron 9. One of my grail sneakers I was able to get this year. Uh, nothing else to say about it. Look at it. This, this is what it is. One of my favorite sneakers ever. So, and Nick Ingvall special with orange. <laughs> Ro, do you like Definitely orange shoes? I, I, I do like orange shoes. I mean, probably. But I think all four of us like orange yeah. on our shoes. It's, I like orange shoes too. My favorite orange shoe, Kobe 8, the All Star. Uh, shout outs to Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, I always wanted to see ch- a shoe in Cheeto form. And I think Eric Goto, who I believe is <laughs> the designer of that, killed that design because it's supposed to represent the terrain of Mars, if I remember my. Uh, mythology correctly it is. but i think for me the retro and it's something mike had mentioned was the fire red threes it's just anytime you give me a og3 colorway that's going to be at the top of my list regardless what the category is and the less i say the more effective it becomes an endorsement so i'll just say fire red threes and keep it moving <laughs> nick what's your favorite uh well first I, i'm i want to say this is out out of character for me oh but my favorite collab of the year has oh, to be the bad. Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones. Fancy. Mainly because if you were to tell anyone, even like three years ago, four years ago, that Louis Vuitton and Nike would release a co-branded Air Force One, like they would have laughed at you, rightfully so. Like I would have laughed at you. We would have been like, yeah, that's a funny joke. Great. <laughs> You're talking about buying it off of like, you know, bootleggers or canal street or, or <laughs> you know like but like the fact that virgil was able to make that happen is still just unbelievable to me and you know when you when you work in the brands and you work for companies we all work for companies where we know like certain things that you would ask would just be like yeah don't even bother right and that's like to do that collaboration is something that probably should have never been asked but like the fact that it like however they made it happen, they did. So like to me, that's like just such a game changer. Uh, and I get that like that's also a trend in sneakers too. But like Nike doesn't follow those trends typically. Nike is like, hey, it's our brand. Like it's it's our brand. Like we are the we are the swoosh. Like we define what cool is in this space, which makes it even more crazy that it happened in the midst of all of the, you know, Adidas, Gucci, Prada collabs, you know, like all these like uh, Margiela Reeboks, like, you know, all the brands are trying this, but like, you know, if we, if we all step back and take off our, you know, our, our sneaker historian, like holistic view, Nike and Louis Vuitton are two, arguably the most, the only thing that could have made that more fucking crazy is if it was like McDonald's (laughs) Nike and Louis Vuitton. (laughs) Like mm-hmm. these are like two of the most recognized brands on the planet, right? And the fact that they made that happen is is wild. So that's that's definitely my my you know collab of the year. The retro stuff is really tough for me because there's so many good retro products that come out from a lot of the brands. I think I'd have to go back to to the T Max, you know, kind of getting like a proper release and like a, a serious amount of colorways. Because Adidas hasn't really done that. He was involved in it this time around, too, like in some of the marketing and like obviously pushed the shoes on his social platforms. So the fact that that all kind of came together was really cool to me. I don't know if I could pick just one because there's so many, you know, like all those Orlando colorways were so good, man. Like I could I could rock T-Mac Orlando colorway stuff all the time. That's, (laughs) you know, not typical for my black and orange, you know, blood. But those colorways are just great. So I, that's that's definitely my favorite kind of series of retro product for the year. It was so good. T-Mac left. Um, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, exactly. My favorite retro <laughs> of the year, um, 185, man, this is cheaper than a LeBron 2 retro. 
That's insane. Uh, this is my retro expensive. of the year, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, 185 is still a lot, but that's in line with Air Max. Uh, I'm not tripping on it. I've wanted these since I was a Nino. Very happy to have them. Nice. So nice, nice. for the next two rounds, we're, we're going to go a little faster here. So we're going to go with your favorite technical shoe. It could be a technical running spike, a technical volleyball shoe, a technical pickleball shoe. Go to... <laughs> Skier sports for a reason. I'm going to start off with the Puma Nitro 2. This nice. is my daily walker when I'm not wearing my ons. That's kind of doesn't make any Don't sense. Don't you dare. Mine but, uh, in the closet. What's up? Don't you dare. Man. These are <laughs> the most comfy. Like, these are the most plush. Like if on had an opposite, it's these nitros. Um, they're plushy. They're cushy. It's like running or walking on marshmallows. Super bright. Go buy a pair from Puma. But uh, nothing has felt that pillow-like um, in a very long time. So th- that's my technical pick of the year. Nice. Uh, I'll just I'll just go real quick. Also, mine. Aren't they I great mean, though? The, sh- the shoe is wild. Yeah, it reminds me of. Uh, I actually the person that sent them to me. Uh, I worked with when the Ultra Boost came out, and I I literally texted him. I was like, I put this on, and it feels like the Ultra Boost. Like the Wow Factor is Ultra Boost level of yeah. Wow Factor. Can't, can't say that there's been a shoe like that since, you know, Ultra Boost, Jordan 28, you know, <laughs> unlock zoom type feeling. Yeah. But yeah, very amazing impressive. shoe. Yep. So if y'all totally. like that one, which I do too, my pair is just in the closet. I can't reach it. It was super great shoe. Um, the Reebok Float Ride X. You talk about that Ultra Boost just kind of unlock cushion feeling. This is literally the best running shoe I've ever put my foot in. Uh yeah, I I don't know what to tell you. Like I like like Roa said earlier, just kind of just want to leave it at that to leave this just the intensity of it all. But this is the best shoe I've ever put on for running bar night. All right, gonna add that to the list. <laughs> uh, for me, the best technical shoe was a gift I also got, much like Nick, from a friend of a friend of a friend. Though I don't have that many friends, and maybe you're trying to protect this man's <laughs> identity or woman, because you know it could be anybody. <laughs> Uh, but it's the Travis Kelsey player edition cleat. These are size 14 at, on my best day. I'm a size 11, nice. but that still did not prevent me from going on eBay, trying to see if I could get a Kansas city chiefs helmet. And then as soon as that helmet arrives, trying to convince my wife to throw me like 12 passes while I wear the helmet in these sneakers and just try to relive my best Travis Kelsey days. <laughs> I just want to see Rowan around see the neighborhood. That. Just, Yes. The helmet, just I'm gonna do the old Randy Moss, take four steps and just put my hand up and then w- skid down the hill because it's icy as hell right now. <laughs> and your shoes are too big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like a toddler in his dad's shoes. Yeah. Um with those on. So I mean that's definitely a surprising a pickup. One. The next one is um a pickup that you didn't think you'd really love. A surprise pickup. You got it and you're like, oh damn, I really I really like I really like this. And um, mine's super random. I wear these all the time. They are a go-to. I keep them in my downstairs closet with my clothes. The the Reebok Beatnik Mock. Um, nice. I'm sorry, listeners in YouTube, but it has this big ass clit. Like this thing <laughs> makes me laugh every time <laughs> I see it. Like whoever designed this part. Um, oh, that's so can we call it a dumping very smart. Just in case we don't want that explicit sticker on our. <laughs> Yeah, there's this, uh, just we get the noise boop, because it's like, <laughs> yeah I mean, it has young the flesh over there. um they slip on like most cool things in 2022 but these things um incredibly comfortable incredibly warm and now you'll never unsee the front of the shoe was every time i look down this is what i think of every time when i see it so <laughs> they're so comfortable though and so easy to get on and they go with everything there's reebok branding but you can barely tell um, so you can wear, I wear these, I wear these with Nike stuff and no one says anything. Oh, so. tell it. <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> um, well, I, I, I'll, I'll go next. Like, I don't actually have the shoe with me cause it's in a, it's somewhere in a box still, but, uh, the going to that same slip on surprising comfort, those Saucony butterfly oh. Tombago collabs, you know, it's like the slip on, you know, kind of like foam. Injection molded, injection molded foam shoe. That shoe is wild, comfortable. I mean, it just, I, I understand why people wear Crocs. 
after wearing that, right? Because like it's just so soft and cushy, and yeah, definitely a surprise for me in terms of like just something I would slip on uh, at random. <laughs> Uh, so I'll go next. I don't have it, right? Like it's in a few boxes too deep. I can't really get under there right now. So, um, the sneaker that was the surprising, like, I really like it actually became one of my favorite shoes was the union two in the rattan color. Uh, I a hundred percent blame, uh, fellow podcaster, Sean Collard for that one because he kept showing twos and he was helping me to try to find a pair. And I found those from the retail and I was like, God dang it. I actually really like this shoe. And for any, absurdities or any kind of uh you know venom i've ever spit towards a jordan too i have to take it all back because god dang it it's a nice looking shoe even though it looks like duck bills when you look down uh from every other angle it looks great it's actually very comfortable it actually fits better than the jordan one so i know our listeners will love to hear that uh <laughs> but that's my surprising uh great shoe for the year like all great number twos, this one took me by surprise as well. Uh, and Robbie, thank you for putting me on game because I know initially you were asking to see if I could get my hands on these for you. I couldn't get your size, but then during the wonders of Van Miss, I was able to hit on a LeBron to Chinese New Year, if I remember correctly. But I'm going to make a petition to say, can we call these the Tiger Zord twos? Because shout outs to Jason David Frank, who uh, rested in power and is joining Zordon up in the big teleporter in the sky. So... That would be I, I agree with all what you said. We're going to call it the Tiger Tour Twos now. Yeah, I can't unsee it. Or call them Sabas. Yeah, Sabas. So kind of like Saba. Oh, um, I should have pulled it out. <laughs> very, very Family cool, show, though. Mike. No, no, um, no you, you weirdo. I have the old toy from like 94 in my closet. <laughs> this is getting sideways ever since Robbie started talking about that dang shit. <laughs> Reebok's going to sell a ton of those shoes now, though. Watch. For the wrong um, reason. <laughs> They're comfortable. That's the reason why you get them. So that's what I. Mean. Um, <laughs> that's what the the last question, I guess, second to last. The last one's kind of the the, the ender. So twenty twenty two. What's your favorite sneaker brand in twenty twenty two? And a short reason why. I'm going to keep mine very short. Uh, on is my shoe of the year. This uh, this cloud away is just the most recent <coughs> example. But uh, they now officially have my everyday lifestyle shoe. They have. My second favorite running shoe behind the Nitro. Um, they have my waterproof boot. They have my waterproof sneaker. Jesus. They have my gym shoe. Like any athletic shoe I wear, pretty much I have a pair of ons for. <laughs> and uh, I do that for a reason. I could go buy a pair of Nikes on discount or a full. I can go buy any pair of shoes anytime I want. And I purposely am like, ah, I don't need a new running shoe because I already have my ons. So that's how good that brand is to me. If you haven't tried them yet, um, if you like Solomon's, give it a try. Similar, nice. but very different. That's my end of my spiel. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's my number one of the year brand. Cool. Uh, my number one is going to have to actually be Saucony. Uh, I got to play like five or six pairs this year. They just been putting out just stupid, just nice shoes without like any kind of real marketing. Seems like I just... For what we do, I always find myself scouring the website, both for the media side of things and the, because we're, I'm an addict of sneakers. But there's literally just so many nice shoes they put out. They're all great quality sneakers. They, they're they what everyone always asks for, but don't want to look back at Saucony because it's not, what, 2010 through 2013. But it's just they're, they're such nice shoes. I mean, this, what can I say about it? They're different. No one's wearing them as much. But they put out a product that is just... A1, in my opinion. I'll give the most generic hype beast answer, and I'll say Nike. And it's not for the obvious reasons, because, yeah, some of the dunks, as we've mentioned previously, are really cool. The, the Ebays, the Simpsons. But I think Nike basketball, in particular, has slowly been on the up and up for a while. And I know, similar to the other K-Man, there's a K-Man that's affiliated with the sport of basketball that sometimes brings a lot of heartache and frustration for us as a community. But... I will say that outside of that, I think the Blank Infinity was a really underrated shoe. I don't think it's going to get its proper love due to who it's affiliated with. But the other two, in this case, the KD-15 and the LeBrons have been phenomenal. I mean, don't just take our words for it. Whatever performance tester you like, they're consistently in the top three in terms of shoes of 2022. So I'll say Nike basketball. Nice. Yeah, I, I would agree with with all of you guys. I mean, there's been some amazing stuff from all those brands. For me, I think I I probably land on Saucony. Um, 
you know, the, the price point and the materials is on par <coughs> with, I mean, arguably on par with new balance in terms of retro runner product, right? Like the, the, you're going to pay 80, 90, a hundred bucks for a pair of shoes from Saucony and you're getting very, very close to the same level of quality that you get out of a $200 shoe from new balance, which is super dope. Um, I also think that, you know, they've done a ton of cool collabs with smaller brands. They recently did a collab with, um, I don't have the, sh- I, I got the shoe, but I don't have it with me, but Albino and Preto is like mm-hmm. a, uh, you know, uh, jujitsu brand that was started by a, a guy named RV who I, I've coincidentally, like we've known of each other through like the car scene for 25 years. Um, and to see him like work his way up to like really just follow his passion and to see Saucony kind of encourage that effort with a collab with a, with a, something that is not traditionally like some, a, a a niche that sneaker brands go to is really a beautiful thing. So that they would get, they would get my, my vote this year. Very nice. I would not think out of four of us, Saucony would be picked twice. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> um, so going ahead to 2023, what's a shoe or a something in shoes you're looking forward to? Uh, I'll start it off. Converse making more fun chucks. Fun chucks is my new favorite thing to say. I like prints on my chucks. Um, I'm excited to see who they work with, what they work with. The Norte collab at the end of the year was really good. Um, lots of cool stuff coming out. So very excited for Converse in 2023, especially with Shea Gildress Alexander playing so well. Converse just has a lot of good pieces right now. Mm-hmm. How about somebody else? What's a 2023 uh, potential highlight? Um, I've already started making some calls to try to get as help, much help as possible with this. And it's not the one we talked about earlier, but uh, Spider-Man into the, uh, across the Spider-Verse, Jordan 1. I have to have it. I missed that on the first one. I am not going to miss this one. I love Spider-Man. I love it more than Jordan 1's, but hey, it's just a shoe it's on. So let's let's get it. I'll go ahead and go next. Uh, similar to what we had chatted about previously, It's a ushering in of a new era because I think if we're looking at the sneaker calendar and Nike basketball specifically, we are seeing the dumping of one athlete, but at the expense of possibly three to four new signature athletes. So I'm really interested to see how does Nike handle this coming together of a lack of a better term, triad of John Morant, Devin Booker, and dare I say Sabrina Inescu, who I think will be the first female uh, sneaker signature in quite some time. I'm really interested to see how that shapes the mindset of performance basketball specifically going forward. But then a boy can dream and a boy hopes that they each get a memorable Nike commercial associated with them because to me, a shoe can be a great thing, but what really puts it over the top is that memorable campaign al- alongside it. And I haven't seen that in a long time from Nike basketball. Sorry, Father Time, but just something about that felt a little hackneyed and cliche. But I'm really excited, especially with John Morant, who outside of maybe Zion is probably the most exciting thing in all of sports. And to have that guy at his peak, and dare I say, and this is the ultimate compliment from a Chiefs fan, having that Mahomesian vibe and impact is something that I can't wait to see what Nike cooks up with because I think they can only go up from there. Nice. We had the Air Deladon earlier this oh, year. Sorry, but yeah. Not a lot of female shoes though. You're you're proving a point. There's not enough of them. So Sabrina's would be great. Yep. Yeah. The Deladon is actually super dope too. Like I think it's up there with the KD fifteen in terms of like the style. Mm-hmm. Um it's tough for me. Like I, I actually just feel like super optimistic about sneakers right now as a whole. Um, you know, obviously I could get excited about the Jordan three, you know, white cement coming back like everybody will. Um, and that Spider-Man one looks amazing. Nike basketball, like kind of putting their foot down, you know, to, to the point I made earlier about like brands standing for what they, they value and believe in. Um, I think that, uh, I I think that people, you know, we, we've been on this, like sneakers to me always ebbs and flows in like, you know, year two, two to three year cycles typically. And depending on what you're talking about, but I think we've been on this like kick where everyone started wearing 
white on white Air Force Ones again, beat them into the ground. Everybody started wearing Panda Dunks, you know, like restock all the time. I think that's actually a great trend that, you know, Nike is saying, hey, these shoes are in demand enough that that they should just be out all the time. And it, it it's funny because it creates more opportunity on the secondary market because people are constantly looking for those shoes still because they know that it's coming. They go where there's more and they can go re up when they want to. But I think that also is is introducing new people to sneakers and to people like us that are looking at a big variety of shoes as opposed to just the same old, same old, you know, kind of cool. Let me get, go get, you know, n- no shots, obviously the Jordan one, cause it's an, probably one of my favorite shoes of all time. But like, you know, that we've been in this kind of mode of like everybody buying the same thing. And we've seen people kind of, I, I think come into the sneaker space in the last few years that they're probably now looking at a wider mix of brands, you know, and, and being exposed to other shoes that they might not have been in the past. And to me, that's exciting. And I don't think that, you know, that's talked about enough at, in the footwear industry. I think it's a, a really beautiful thing, you know, that we're, we're starting to see brands step outside of their comfort zone in terms of style, in terms of collaborations, and really just like, you know, to, to the point that you guys all made about what your choices were too, right? Throughout this, this episode, there's just so many different cool things going on in sneakers right now that, you know, it's, it's hard to not be excited about it. I know that we get kind of hooked, you know, caught up on the, on the frustration of, of, you know, not getting things on sneakers app and the confirmed app and all that stuff. But in general, like you could look a different direction after any of those moments and you can find some pretty amazing stuff for, you know, not, not too crazy of a price, which to me is really awesome. Beautiful. And I think we will keep seeing more and more people get into shoes in 2023. And what happens from that? It's a mixed bag of feelings. So (laughs) let's keep it positive. 2022 was a great year. I'm thankful for the three of you being in my life. Listeners for being in our collective lives. Make sure you're following all of us at all the major platforms. Um, You can find me at R-A-H-B-E-E 702. And at sneakerhistory.com and sneakerhistory.everything. How about somebody else? Where can, where can you be found, sirs? Yeah, you can find me, of course, here at Sneaker History. Find me on Instagram and Twitter at MadWatcher789. And, of course, YouTube at just Mike Guillory. What about you, Rohit? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Rohizi, on Instagram at RohitM13, Mastodon Hive. I'm trying to take up that RohitM13 empire, regardless of where <laughs> and wherever we want to go. And you know what? Because I like Nick Engvall a lot, I'm going to let him speak next. But also follow us on Exhaust Notes, because if you think I'm exhausting on this show, wait till you see me in my quote-unquote element. So, Nick, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at Nick Engvall everywhere. Like Rowett said, I'm signing up for all these, you know, new platforms. I just signed up for Post the other day. Um, but uh, yeah, Exhaust Notes, Crown and Stitch, Sneaker History. Most importantly, hit the first link in the description wherever you're watching this or listening. Join the community on the Discord. I, you know, it's four of us on here, but there's 500 or so amazing people that pop in there to have these conversations with us throughout the week. So um uh, just yeah to robbie's point i appreciate you guys it's been great to catch up again i'm looking forward to doing more and and have more of these conversations with you throughout the next year so appreciate y'all we'll catch you on the next one Peace. See ya. happy holidays everybody hey everyone this is nick again before you take off do us a solid and head over to apple podcast to leave us a review Give us a rating on Spotify and Amazon Music, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because we have even more video content coming soon. Speaking of new content, we have an amazing community of sneaker enthusiasts that hang out in our Sneaker History Discord on a daily basis. While sneakers is a connection point that brought us all together, we've all discovered countless shared passions that we have in common with each other. We recently launched a couple of new podcasts directly from our community. One of them is a Formula One podcast. If you're an F1 fan like me, the Exhaust Notes podcast is your weekly fix of Formula One fun. It's hosted by myself, Rohit Malhotra, and Todd Yates. New episodes drop every Tuesday. I've been wearing fitted hats for years and collecting my favorite teams since I was a little leaguer. It has been awesome to see so many new fans getting into fitteds in recent years. Crown and Stitch is our new talk show about fitted hats with Dexter, Keith, and myself, where we talk about fitted hats, snapbacks, throw in some obscure hats because we all kind of like some funky stuff once in a while, don't we? Copping, collecting, and so much more. 
New episodes drop every Wednesday. Hit the links in the show notes for this episode to give our new shows a listen and be on the lookout for more new podcasts dropping soon. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Thank you all for the support, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.